everyone, my name is Lily and today I'd like to show you how to create an infographic in Viznit to better communicate your ideas. A good infographic design starts with preparation. So before we jump into the Vizme editor, let's make use of some pen and paper or to save trees, use a digital document and go through a few questions that will help you make your message more relevant and engaging for your audience. First, try to think about who your target audience is and what is it they really care about. Then try to formulate your main message in one short sentence and define what's your goal or the overall purpose of your infographic. Keeping all these in mind, go and collect data that will be relevant for your audience and then narrow it down to just the most important ones so that the viewer won't get lost in a sea of information and then create a rough outline of the main points you want to cover. I'm going to create an infographic on why infographics are awesome. These are the main sections I will cover and here I've written up all the actual copy that will go into the design. Try to keep it short and sweet, the shorter the copy the better. Next, I like to create a rough sketch of the main sections of my infographic so I have a visual aid helping me choose the right layouts later. I even created a little list of the blocks needed corresponding with the list of sections. Once you have collected everything you need, head over to Visme and create a new project. There are hundreds of themes to choose from, searchable by keywords. Remember to choose a theme based on the kind of infographic your content needs. Is your content calling for a comparison? Or is it a list, process, or a timeline? Pick one that more or less fits your content, but don't worry, you can change its structure, colors, and fonts later. So at this point, just focus on the overall layout of the theme, or you can choose black. I like to start my design by creating the skeleton of my content first. For that, I'm gonna zoom out in the bottom left corner and resize the browser window to see my outline. When you're creating an infographic in Visme, you're gonna be working with so-called blocks. My first block is a header, which is great the way it is. Then next, I will need one with three icons and some text under each. I could either delete one of these and reposition the remaining three, but it doesn't quite look the way I imagined it. So let's look around the templates Visme offers. Just click on this plus button and select add from template. Blocks are organized by categories on the left-hand side. I need icons and text, so I click on that. And, oh, this one looks good. It has one more row than I need, but I can easily delete that. To multi-select objects in Visme, press shift and draw a rectangle touching each object you need selected. Then hit delete and resize the block to match your content. The next block will be the one with the chart. There are charts among the templates, but for the sake of learning, I'd like to show you how to create one from scratch. Click on add blank, but leave it empty for now so it can act as a placeholder while we finish our skeleton. This next block will need three data widgets, so I'll delete the unnecessary ones and get rid of the empty space. This block I don't need, so it gets deleted, but instead I need a comparison one. I just need to compare two images, so I pick this one. I need the versus sign between the pictures, so I reshuffle things a little bit. To have a title identical to the previous block, right-click on it and hit duplicate. Finally, I delete the remaining blocks that I don't need and add a footer from the templates, which by the way can be added from down here as well. I need one with a button and then a short blank one to display my sources. And voila! That's our skeleton done! If you decide to change the order of your blocks later, you can always just click move up or down to easily reshuffle them. Alright, next up, we're going to set up the colors. You can either do this by clicking on theme colors on the left toolbar and selecting a theme you like, or you can define the colors precisely by clicking on this little colored box in the upper left corner. I have added my brand colors to my document, so I'm just gonna copy paste its value right here and click OK. To change all objects with the same color, you can hit replace all. Once you're happy with the colors, move on to replace all text and images in the template. Click on the text box and copy paste your content into it. To change it all to uppercase letters, click on settings and under transform you'll find uppercase. To replace the background with one of our built-in royalty-free images, select the image, then click on the little gear icon next to the photo and select set as background. You can also upload an image from your computer by clicking on upload background. You can edit the image within the Visme editor to make it fit the style of your document. Next, let's find the right icons to visualize your points. Click on any icon and hit replace. Make sure to choose one style of icons and stick to it throughout your infographic to create a unified, professional look. In this one, I'm going with simple line icons. When searching for the right icons, try to think of a few different words that relate to your topic to find the most appropriate visual. To add in new text boxes, click on basics and place the text into its position. You can resize it by dragging its corners and you can change its fonts and colors in the top menu bar. You can also set or restrict colors and fonts to reflect your brand via the My Brand feature in your dashboard. Next, let's create that chart I've talked about before. 
Click on Data on the left toolbar and select Charts. You can create all kinds of charts and graphs in our editor. For my content, I want to make a line chart since I want to show the growth of popularity of infographics. You can import data from Google Sheets, which will create a live link between the two documents, or you can also upload an Excel file from your computer. Depending on the type of graph and your data, you may need to click on this icon to switch columns and rows. Under Settings, you can change the title of the chart as well as its color, font, size, and a bunch of other settings. All charts in Visme come automatically animated, which means that as the viewer scrolls down your infographic, it will play this animation you see here as they arrive to the chart. You can change the type of animation or turn it off if you prefer. Finally, to change the color of the line itself, go back to data and click on this colored box. To change your chart size on the canvas, you have to unlock it up here and then change the width and height by typing in their value in pixels. Next up, widgets. Widgets are a great way to visualize statistics in Visme. Just click on stats and figures under basics and drag the one you need onto the canvas. Ungroup it in the upper left corner and position it to fit your design. Double click on the widget or hit settings on the top menu bar. Select show value so the number value will be displayed in the circle. Change its colors and here comes the best part. As you move this toggle left or right, your value in the widget changes automatically. Duplicate the widget and I'm also gonna add some icons under them. After all, people tend to remember 80% of visuals but only 20% of text. In this next section, I want to compare a road sign with another sign that is text-based to prove to viewers how effective and fast visuals can be. To show you what you could do with shapes in Visme, I will build this text-based sign with our built-in tools. On their graphics, find shapes and insert a simple rectangle. Change its color to white, then go to Effect on the right side of the top menu and turn on Border. Change the thickness and make the corners rounded so it looks similar to the triangle, then change its colors to this orangey color from our brand. Add the text box and align it so it looks like a proper road sign. Next, I'm going to quickly rearrange these text boxes so we have the call to action on top and then let's make this button orange. Since the button is actually a text box with a background color, to change it you have to click on this hamburger menu on top, which is text box settings, change its color and then to make its corners rounded, turn on border and change its roundness. And voila! You can also make this button interactive by linking it to a web page. The link option is hidden in the upper right corner. You can link it to blocks within the document as well, so if you click on it, it jumps to that block within the infographic or have pop-ups, which means that the object will only appear when people click on certain other objects. However, for this one, I want people to sign up for Rizmi to create their own infographics, so I just type in the link, set to open in a new window, and hit apply. To spread the word about your new infographic, click share in the upper right corner. You can publish it as a public document, which will give you a shareable link, or privately, where only certain people can view it, and you can even make it password protected. To embed it anywhere on the web, just copy this embed code. You can also download your infographic as an image, HD optional, or as a PDF, which is the best option for vector graphics, as it can be zoomed in as much as you want, and it won't lose quality. Turn on bleed marks if you plan to print it. Hyperlinks will work in your downloaded PDF. However, animations will only show if you download it as an HTML5. And that's infographics for you! For more videos on infographics, presentations, and other visual content, subscribe to our channel or visit support.visme.co.